Member for Lakeland. Mr. Speaker, a financial crime expert says the Emergencies Act is a, quote, serious deviation from normal democratic process. A U of T finance professor says banks may be inclined to overreact so as to not run afoul of government. Security and finance experts say there are no suspicious activities or credible threats with protest-related donations. There's no evidence, court order, or due process, and no limits on what direct or indirect participation means. It's already happening to my constituents. So when will frozen bank accounts Accounts be up and running again. Here, here. The Honourable Minister of Emergency Preparedness. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, the Integrated Command Team, which is composed of the Ottawa Police Service, the OPP, and the RCMP, have been clear and unequivocal. The authorities that have been provided to them under the Emergency Act have been essential to the progress that they have made in getting the situation under control. And, Mr. Speaker, we've also heard. From the, from the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police, that's all the chiefs. The Ontario Association of Chiefs of Police and even the Canadian Police Association representing the rank and file all have been clear and unequivocal. These measures were essential and have been helping them restore order in this country. The Honourable Member for Lakeland. Mr. Speaker, the Coots, Emerson and Windsor borders were cleared before the Prime Minister invoked the Emergencies Act. It wasn't required for demonstrators to leave Ottawa either. Security and financial experts say there were no real threats to Canada and no suspicious financial activity. A lawyer who actually helped draft the Act said it was unnecessary, that the burden of proof was not convincingly met, and that there was, quote, no evidence of a threat to the security of Canada. So what changed between the Prime Minister supporting it on Monday night and revoking it on Wednesday? Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the Emergencies Act was essential to law enforcement success in ending blockades and protests across the country. We always said that we would not keep the Act in force for any longer than was necessary, and we made good on that commitment. And as we've said since the beginning, we're acting on the advice of law enforcement and giving them the tools that they need. Mr. Speaker, we will continue to provide all of the enforcement tools that are required to maintain public safety. And I again want to thank all of the members of the RCMP and law enforcement for the exceptional job that they did. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Lakeland. But Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister implied protesters were terrorists. On Friday, the Deputy Director of FinTrack was asked if terrorists were using crowdfunding platforms to launder money. He said, quote, we haven't seen them, it's not a high risk. But Canadians' accounts were frozen and sweeping powers were put in place. Last week, Conservatives asked if the Liberals got a legal opinion. The Justice Minister just said that he felt standards were met, which is, of course, not an actual legal assessment. So I'll ask again, will the Liberals release the legal opinion to Canadians and what changed in 36 hours? The Honourable um, Minister. Of, uh... Mr. Speaker, the Emergencies Act was, was brought in in, in, in in the mid-80s in direct response to the, to the Charter of Rights and Freedoms in this country. It provides for rigorous parliamentary oversight both in, in this place and in the other place. It also could, provides for a review. And, Mr. Speaker, most importantly, the, the Act requires that every measure that is undertaken under the Act be compliant with the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Mr. Speaker, we will always respect the Charter.